Hello everyone, welcome to this edition of Iredell Statesville Schools Ed Talks. Our guest today uh, needs no introduction. Uh, Martin Page is our newly elected chairman of the Iredell Statesville Schools Board of Education and he's our guest today. Thank you. Thank Mr. You Page, me here. thank you for coming by. I know you're busy and we appreciate you carving out some time to be here. Uh, never too busy for doing something with the schools. Yes, sir. I know that. Well, I want to start off by saying congratulations on your uh, election as our new chair. Uh, that's a big responsibility. Has it sunk in yet? Uh, yeah, I'm afraid it's starting to. Uh, uh -huh. Thank you. And uh, I thank the board for their confidence in me. Uh, but yes, the uh, reality is uh, starting to set in that I'm beginning to realize the, the magnitude of what the school system is all about. Yeah. And of course, being a teacher for a long time and then two, two and a half years ago when I got on the board, I was shocked with the reality of what the board has to do. People just have no idea the complexity of the school system. Yes. And so now I'm in a whole, a whole nother level of complexity. So yeah, it, it's going to, and I hope people are patient with me because it's right. going to take me a while. I mean, when you replace somebody like David Cash, Dr. Cash, I mean, he's, the shoes are just huge, mm -hmm. and and that that gentleman done so much for our system and everything. So, it's uh, like coming in behind Bear Bryant at Alabama. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's, you know, I realize that, and uh, I hope people are patient with me. Yeah, they will be absolutely. Well, you bring a unique uh, set of credentials to the chairmanship too. You were a teacher for 38 years, and that obviously has uh, a great uh, impact on the way you see things and the way you conduct yourself and conduct business for the school system. Talk to us a little bit about your career pathway and what you did over your 38 years. Well, I started out, uh, I, I was in the automotive repair business. So I come from a business, I ran my own business for a while, worked for others. Uh, my father was a teacher at a community college. Mm -hmm. So I guess I had a little bit of that in my background. And I had the opportunity to start teaching at Northern Nash High School in Rocky Mount, North Carolina. And I taught there seven years, and I had the opportunity to move to Statesville. Uh, I moved to Statesville. I moved up here and taught automotive at Statesville High School. And you were one of my assistant principals, we'll say, yeah. a, a few years ago. That's right. Yeah. So uh, we've known each other for a long time. Right. Uh, got in coaching. I was a cross-country coach, lucky enough, boys and girls, to have some great teams. Uh, we were actually the top 3A school one year. And then I was a boys basketball coach. I coached basketball at Statesville for nine years. So I've been involved in a whole lot of different mm -hmm. areas of it. Uh, so I, I do br probably bring a lot different look at the system because mm -hmm. I like to think I'm looking from the bottom up. And, right. and I, I, so I guess I'm gonna be a, and have been a, a real, a really interested in what goes on in the classroom, because mm -hmm. that's where the rubber meets the road. Everything else we do is all important, mm -hmm. but it's still in the classroom. What we are doing for the children, it's what we're all here for. That's right. Absolutely. Well said. Well, um, as you um, as you look at what's going on in our nation and across our state. Uh, public schools are changing, and we've got competition now that we've never had before. Uh, what do you see future-wise for public education and the competition from charters and vouchers, and where is that taking us? I'm scared right now for public education. There, there's a huge move, an anti-public education move, I think, nationwide, and, and especially in North Carolina, which right. I really don't understand why or where it came from. Now, I think charters, and I think the original charters that were, the plan was a great plan back in the 80s when they first come out with charters. It was a good plan because we have problem areas. We have areas that just aren't successful in education. And we need to address those. And I don't mean our states, well, I mean nationwide, mm -hmm. statewide. And, and we have some issues here. We have places that we're struggling in education. So charters were developed originally to, go into these areas and give parents an alternate education. And they were gonna be used and see what worked and see what didn't work and they were given some uh, parameters a lot less restrictive than the public education. Mm -hmm. But it morphed into people saw a lot of money available 
And now we have for-profit charters that are out there, and some of them do a great job. I know parents that's got their kids in charter schools. I'm, and, and to be honest, we'd be bankrupt if it wasn't for charters because we couldn't, we couldn't have enough buildings right now. I mean, so I'm not saying I'm anti-charter. I'm let's let charters do what they're supposed to do and let us do what we're supposed to do. And don't make us compete with each other. Uh, and for goodness sakes, give us the same rules. I, I really think that's where it's gone overboard now is the charters get to make their rules, mm -hmm. but we don't get to make ours. We're told by the federal government and state government pretty much everything we have to do. And maybe that was the biggest shock I had when I, I got on the board was the lack of decisions we actually get to make. Right. The state tells us if we're going to take their money, you're going to do it this way. Right. And we don't have an option. Right. And the same thing with the federal government. So we're very limited in some of the decisions we make. Uh, one is the calendar. And I know you want to talk about the calendar. Absolutely. Uh, the school calendar to me is, is our number one concern right now. We have got to get some more flexibility. It's not fair to our teachers to not have work days during the year, to be made to have all the work days before or after school. Why? They need days to get all the paperwork they have to do. And unfortunately, along with federal and state money comes paperwork right. and testing right. and all these. So, you know, I think we'd all like to go back 20 years mm -hmm. to education the way it was then, but we'll never go back. Right. It's, it's just gonna continue going right. forward. Right. And so I really would like to see us have the same flexibility with calendars that uh, the charter schools have mm -hmm. and, and we used to have. Right. Uh, especially in Ireland, because we have, and we're starting, I'm so excited we're starting a new early college at North Ireland, right. an agricultural based college. And I grew up in the country, worked on farms all my life. Uh, matter of fact, I was priming tobacco mm -hmm. the summer that I ended up moving to Statesville. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that was, thank goodness, that was the last time I had to prime tobacco was the summer before I moved to Statesville. Even as a teacher, I worked right. on the farm in the summer. And, and so, uh, it, we, we need this so we can start our children at the same time the community colleges start. Mm -hmm. We can let our early graduates be able to go on to college. It's, right. we, we've got to get calendar flexibility. That's one of the biggies. Yep, absolutely. Let's talk a little bit about the A through F report card. Um, I think all of us in education, we grew up with accountability. We want accountability. The taxpayers deserve accountability. but. Is the A through F report card doing what it was intended to do? Absolutely not. It's, it's uh, I think probably when it come out, a lot like charters, it was a good idea. It just went wrong somewhere in the, in the implementation of it, which is what happens with a lot of things. It, it, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's a good idea, but if you implement it poorly, mm -hmm. it's not a good idea. So. We've got schools that are listed as felon schools, and I've had the pleasure to visit these schools. Mm -hmm. I've had the pleasure to take one of our state representatives to these schools and see. And they're not failing schools. They're, they're not failing, but they're labeled that way because of a test. And who wants to be graded on one test one day? Right. And, and the other thing is, unlike business, where you have a raw product that's fairly consistent. We don't. Right. I mean, our children come to us that are way up here or way down here in preparation to come to school. Mm -hmm. And that, that doesn't mean this child's better than this child. They're not. They're right. both children. And we've got to, to bring this child up. Well, we can bring him up more than we're taking this one up. Right. But if it's not at the level that the state Mm -hmm. arbitrarily sets, then they say we're failing. And, and I don't understand that. We, we, there's such a misconception about what is failing and what is passing. It's not like a business. A business, you get that bottom line. Right. We made money or we didn't make money. And that tells you on a business. Children are not that way. Right. You know, I always say they're not cookie dough. You can't use a cookie cutter because they're not cookie dough. They're, they're, they're kids, and it, it's unfortunate that this A through F has really done damage to people. Mm -hmm. it, is, it has hurt their self-esteem, right. and 
it's, it's just important that people out there understand that this system's not working. We need another system. I, I love, you know I love accountability. Uh, and that was w one of the things I ran for was, was more transparency and accountability. Because I, I really think the people need to know what we're doing. But we need a fair and equitable way to inform them of what we're doing. And A through F doesn't work. Right. One of the things that we're asking the General Assembly to consider is to tweak that A through F report card and the formula that is used to determine the letter grade. Currently, it's an 80-20 model. 80% 80, 80 of that grade is based on pure performance. 20% of it is based on student growth. In my view, and in a, lot of it, a lot of us in education, that should be reversed. Because if you go to a school like NB Mills, you'll see ch children that walk in the door in August, and by the end of the year, those kids have grown tremendously. And we're not recognizing that effort on the part of the kids and the teachers. So, you know, if they don't reverse it, at least make it a 50-50 model. And hopefully the General Assembly is going to take a look. Well, if we're going to have that style of accountability, we've yep. got to do something like that. Because if a school is successful if it's growing its students. Amen. And I've, I've been to MB Mills many times. Love to go to MB Mills. I take a lot of people to MB Mills. You know that. Right. I, I just that that school gives you such a feeling. If 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 that's a failing school, then doggone right. it. Well, let's all of them fail. Cause I mean, it is. It's yeah. it's just got such a great atmosphere and, and mm -hmm. to, to see the kids as they progress. But we we've got it. I'm not even sure that anything based on testing. I know that's probably the only way we got to measure it, but one test is not a fair thing right. to start with. Uh, and it's certainly not fair to grade a school, a whole school on what is going no. on on one, one day. And I agree, if we're gonna do it, it needs to be flip-flopped, because it's more about are we being successful growing our mm -hmm. students. And all the A through F, and you can see every chart in the world, and all it is is it's identifying your low socioeconomic schools. Right. It, those charts run right together, yeah. and I, I was one of the first things I really learned on the board was mm -hmm. when I come on two and a half years ago, was you can throw all the other statistics out, all A through F does is the lower the grade, the lower the socioeconomics of the school, and that's not fair. That's just not a fair way to do it. Right. Uh, we had our first uh, legislative breakfast of the new year um, uh, yesterday, as a matter of fact. Uh, what, what were your takeaways from the breakfast yesterday? I hope our legislators there saw the passion in, in, in the presenters. We had teachers and parents and principals, and I hope they saw the passion. If they got nothing else, just the passion. We had a TA speak that all of us were fighting back tears yeah. to listen to that lady tell her story of what she did in a day. Right. And, uh, and, I, and I want to publicly say, TAs are the best bang for the buck we have in our school system. Absolutely. They really are. And uh, I, I, I thought a lot of good points were shown, and I'm glad it was shown by our staff, school level staff. Mm -hmm. Again, I go back to the school levels where the rubber meets the road. Right. And I like, the closer the classroom decisions made, the better the decision is, in my opinion. And I thought that's what I, I thought that we presented well yesterday. Good, good. I did too. I agree. You know, uh, the county commissioners, of course, were there yesterday, and uh, there is a education committee uh, that the county commissioners uh, have functioning now. That committee is going to be co-chaired uh, by Gene Haup and Marvin Norman. And they're going to be asking you to serve on that committee and to appoint two other uh, school board members. Uh, what's your thoughts about that new openness and collaboration and the two boards working together in harmony? Uh, you, I, I've always wondered why they didn't. I mean, that's yeah. so far past due that uh, we, we won't even talk about the past. Let's just talk about the future. Of it. I think it's great. I, I, mm -hmm. I think that the more we work together, the right. better off we're going to be. We're all in the same boat. Uh, let's face it, we're, we take more money than any other part of the county. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so we're responsible to the taxpayers, and we're responsible to the county commissioners. And there's no better way than sitting down like you and I are doing right now and discussing it right. and, and, and not having surprises with each other. 
and, and I think it's great. I think that committee will do a whole lot. And, and Marvin, I've known, I've known both of those gentlemen for years. As a matter of fact, Gene played basketball for me, so I've yelled at him many times. Uh, so I think, I, I think it's just the way it needs to be done. I, I, and I hope that we're going to be aggressive uh, as a board mm -hmm. to go out and be not politically active, but to talk to our legislators, talk to our county commissioners, be comfortable with each other. And I, I really see us moving in that direction, a lot more uh, joint ventures together. Uh, we've talked about some with uh, recreation, working with the county on recreation. And that, that's, we both do that for children. Right. Why don't we talk about it and do it together? Yeah. And so I think there's lots of issues. And anytime you're spending that much money, we get a lot of money from the county, 32 million, I believe mm -hmm. it is. Uh, they've got to hold us accountable. Sure. And that's their job. And we've got to understand that's their job. Right. And they, they're going to ask questions, and we need to be prepared to answer them. So it, it's, it's good from both sides. Yeah. Accountability and th what we can do by working together instead of kind of working separately. Right. Do you believe that the Iron Statesville Schools is doing a good job of spending that money currently? Are we giving the taxpayers a good return on their investment? Absolutely. I, I'm not going to say we're perfect. Nobody's perfect. Right. But yes, I, I think we do. I think, uh, uh, I think, and I'll be honest, I think we've tightened up a little bit, or tightened up a lot in the last few years. I think we've, we've, uh, we've about squeezed it as much as we can squeeze it. Mm. Uh, a lot of things, people see the big dollars and they say, well, the state increased this much. But mm -hmm. when the state increased it, they told us what we had to do with it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when salaries increase, then our costs increase. Right. So, and my gosh, we need some salary increases. I mean, uh, all the way from the bottom to the top, right. uh, we, we, we're going to have to increase some salaries. Mm -hmm. And we've done that a little bit with our classified people. I'm right. very proud of that getting a new classified schedule, right. giving them a couple of percent raise. Not enough, but right. we're starting to move in the right direction. And uh, accountability, I think, is up. I think mm -hmm. we're, we're more in the public and people know what we're doing. Mm -hmm. But I think overall, we're doing a great job. I'm gonna tell you, I don't believe there's a school system in North Carolina that's anywhere close to what we do. The choices we give our students, the quality of the education we give our students, uh, I just, I just don't see it. And I've been lucky enough to go around and speak uh, in North Carolina, e even at a national conference, about our little states with schools. Right. And tell them to that we, I got to speak in Texas on the partnerships we have. Mm -hmm. I mean, other school systems come here all the time. And that's one of the big things they, how do you get these companies to come in and work with you? How do you get this or how do you get that? And it's all about selling yourself and going out and asking our business partners, we had a great forum day before last yep. uh, where a bunch of business people come in and sit down in front of our CTE teachers mm -hmm. and just honestly told them what we need in employees. We need somebody that can uh, do math at this level, can right. read at this level, can pass a drug test, yep. you know, things can come in and interview well. Mm -hmm. So that was, that's the type of thing we do. I think we reach out to the business people more than any other school system mm -hmm. in the state. I, I'm so proud of what we do here. Yeah, and I would echo too that our nonprofits in the community that we work with, the Boys and Girls Club, the United Way, and others, along with our faith-based partners, a lot of folks in the community don't realize we have over 100 churches that have partnership agreements with us. And they're constantly in our schools volunteering, doing lunches for teachers. I mean, we are very blessed with a number of partnerships, business, nonprofit, and faith-based in the community. We are, and, and, and my church is one that yeah. works with the system. And a uh, touching little story is, is we do the backpacks, mm -hmm. which we take oh, yeah. to the schools. and That's going on all over this county. Most people don't understand what is going on, where the churches are coming into our schools on, on mm -hmm. Friday and providing backpacks full of food for some yeah, of our absolutely. underprivileged children to take home so they'll have food over the weekend. And this little girl come up and said, hey, I'm not to me, one or the other gentleman, mm -hmm. and said, uh, hey, I know you. And really? Who are you? And she said, I'm number three. Because that was the backpack number. Yeah. 
Yeah, she got. And she was number three. Yeah. And it, yeah. you know, that just uh, she wasn't Susie. She wasn't yeah. whatever. Number she was. Three. I'm number three, and it yeah. it made you realize how important. Absolutely. She was proud to be number three. Absolutely. I mean, it it was uh, it was yeah. touching. So, yeah. uh, I, I see. And, and let me give you some credit. I know right now you're picking a car, child up and taking him to school because of some issues he's having. Yeah. Uh, that, that's just amazing. And, and, and our whole system's that way. Uh, it's all about the kids. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I say that constantly. We've got 2,700 employees, and I don't know of any of them that won't go out of their way to help a child. It truly is. We're focused on the individual child in this district, and I think that's why we've done so well. Um, well, we're out of time, but I do want to thank you again for being here today. Congratulations on your chairmanship, and I look forward to working with you the years ahead to continue to give the kids and the parents in this community a great education. Enjoyed thank you. it. Thank you. All right. Well, folks, thanks for tuning in. We appreciate your time, and we hope you're getting something out of these segments. Again, thanks for watching.